I can think of two perfect scenarios for swapping heads. The first one is when we're doing a group photo and not everybody's looking perfect in one photo so we can take a head from one, pop it into the face of another photograph. The second one is maybe you want to try a new hairstyle or something like that. You don't want to commit to the scissors but you want to see what it's going to look like. So this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do swapping heads for both of these purposes. <laughs> All right, so I've got two tutorials for you right now. The very first one we're going to do is we're going to swap faces in a group photo. And this is, you know, very typical when you take a group shot and you give everybody a copy of the photographs. No two people are going to like the same photo. They're going to be like, I love this photo, but my face looks really bad. In fact, they don't even look at the other people. They just look at their own face. Oh, I'm squinting. I don't look good here. I don't like this photo. So what I'm going to do is show you how to solve that we're going to take uh, the face from one photograph and pop it into another group photo so that we can have all the best faces in one photo. Now the second scenario is I'm going to show you how to take a face and pop it onto another person's head so you can get a preview of maybe what a new hairstyle or something that would look like before you actually do it. So anyway, let's get started right now. Now the photographs that we've got here I've taken from Adobe Stock. So we're going to start with these two here and you see we've got one there and a second one here. Now, by the way, if you want to grab 10 free images from Adobe Stock, I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can grab those right now. So I'm looking at this photograph and it's, I don't like necessarily her head coming forward so much. It's kind of dominating the shot, but I do like the smile. It's kind of cute here. Uh, but if we go on this other one there, you know, this, the smile's kind of pretty good. Everything's looking a little bit better, but I don't like the straight face on her. And maybe we'd like a little bit more of a smile on this one and here. So we're actually going to be able to do all of that right now. So let's get started. I'm going to grab the first photograph here. And this is the one, this is going to be our donor image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our marquee select tool. So let's just grab that right now with our lasso. And what we're going to do is just make a nice big selection around the whole face right there. Now, sometimes I just make a selection around the face part and I might feather it. But in this case, it's going to give me a little bit more to work with. So we're going to take the move tool and we're going to drag this into the new one and you haven't released yet. Now, here's a tip. If you hold down the shift key and release it, it will pop it in exactly the same spot. All right, obviously this doesn't look very convincing. It looks more like a Halloween mask than it does a face right now. So let's have a look. First of all, we want to position it properly. So what I'm going to do is just tap the five key. And what that did is it changed the opacity of our top layer to 50%. You can see that there. So I'm just going to nudge that over and I want to anchor the nose. And notice if it just kind of feels like it's weird, it's popping around, that's snapping. And if we go under view, we can go down here and we can turn snap off and now you'll get a freer movement. Okay, so let's pop the nose right in there. Looking good. Right on the other nose. And what I'm going to do is I want free transform. And that's Control T or Command T on the Mac. And notice where's our free transform, but notice we've got this little mark there. This is our anchor point. We want to move that to the middle of the nose. Now when we rotate or do anything, notice it's going to do it from that anchor point. So this is going to make it easy for us to rotate and line everything up. All right, so now I'm just going to hit enter and then we're going to hit the zero key to bring this back. So let's have a look at it before and after to make sure the positioning is right. You know what? That positioning is pretty good. It's not quite perfect, but that's going to work for our purposes. So now what we're going to do is create a mask that hides everything. So normally we just click on the layer mask to create a mask. But in this case, what we want to do is create a mask where everything is hidden and then we're just going to paint back in what we want with white. So in order to do that, we hold down the Alt or the Option key. That would be Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, and then just click. Notice we now see a mask which is black and notice it hides everything on that layer because we don't really need to paint everything back in. We just need the features around this area here. So we're going to make sure we've got a white brush Hit the B key to activate the brush, foreground color set to white. And then we want to make sure that our size is down a little bit. Hardness is all the way down, which means it's soft. We definitely want that. And opacity, let's turn that all the way up to 100. So I'm just going to tap the right bracket key to do that. And now what I want to do is just paint inside the mask. 
So I'm just going to paint in here and as we are, notice what I'm doing. I'm just being careful to point in the nose there. And now we're just going down and we're starting to paint the smile and painting in the face. All right, so what about if we want to adjust some of these smiles? Well, let me go back down. I'm going to adjust, go back to the background layer. And then if we choose filter up here and we go down to the liquify tool. Now notice as we're going over these different faces, you can see these uh, appearing, which means that Photoshop has actually detected these faces. So why don't we just tap on this one? Notice under face, it changes to face three. So this is the face that we're working with. Now we can adjust all these different things. And in fact, I've created another tutorial where I get a little bit more in depth into face aware liquify, and I'll add you the link underneath for that. So what we're going to do is just give her a little bit more of a smile. So if we go down to the mouth under the smile, yes, there is a smile slider. We can make her smile or we can make her frown. So why don't we just give it just a little hint of a smile there so it doesn't look fake. Excellent. Let's do the same one for her over here. This is face number two. Let's give her a little bit of a smile. There we go. And if we want, we can even go under the eyes. And if we want to pop open the eye height, make sure they're linked. And then so she's also smiling with her eyes. So, you know, we can play around with this and have a lot of fun, by the way. So we go there. And if we go before and after, you can see how we're able to do that very quickly. All right, let's jump into our second scenario. Okay, so we've got two women here. We've got this woman and we've got this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take her and we're just gonna drag her into the other one and I'm gonna hold down shift and drop it. Okay, so let's just hit the five key and now what we wanna do is kind of align these faces. Now, one of the things you may notice is that no two faces are alike. Some people's heads are taller, some people's faces are wider. So we can't just take the features when we're swapping faces out from other people. Because if you were to do that, you would have the other person's cheekbones and chin and forehead, which could look a little bit weird. So what we're thinking about here is maybe this girl at the front here. Let me just hit the zero, give her 100%. She's the one here and she, maybe she wants to try on this hairstyle. So she doesn't necessarily have to look like the other person. She just needs to look like herself. All right, so let's do that right now. So we're going to grab her and hit the five key again. And what we're looking for is areas like the top of the head. We definitely want the top of the head to line up. Um, that's looking pretty good. The size might be a little different. I'm going to grab control T for free transform, hit the alt or the option key, and we're just going to shrink it down a little bit. So her face is going to be kind of a similar size to the other one. Now, notice if I go down here, the chin is going to end there. I need to actually go just a little bit larger. There we go. And I'm going to take it to about there. And so if we look at this, notice that this one is looking straight on. This one, her chin is actually tilted down a little bit, so it's slightly changing the shape. But it's really not going to matter in this case because people are never going to see the original face. They're only going to see the new face that we put on. And by the way, this is a great kind of thing to do too for, um, you know, taking someone like me, which is, you know, as you guys can tell, I'm an extremely incredible um, physical shape. And then people like my friend Jesus Ramirez from Photoshop Training Channel have Photoshopped my head onto a muscular body, which is, you know, and, and it also has better hair than I do. But anyway, let's continue with this tutorial. In fact, what I should be doing is I should be Photoshopping Jesus's face onto here and then, then we'd be a little bit more even. All right, so <laughs> let's try this right now. So we're gonna bring this one up and then we're gonna create the inverted mask. So we're just gonna hit the Alt key and click on the mask there. And now what we wanna do is we wanna paint in the new face. Before I do, let me just do something. I'm gonna hide this mask just by shift clicking on the mask. And one of the things you'll notice is the colors are a little more desaturated than they are on here. So why don't we just fix that right now? I'm just gonna hit Control U for hue saturation. And I'm gonna bring down the saturation just a little bit. And we may tweak it a little more later on. All right, so we click OK, there we go, nice. All right, shift click. So once again, we're back there. So all we're gonna do is grab a white brush. So we're gonna hit B for brush. Notice that white is the background, hit the X key, white is now the foreground. And then we're gonna hit the right bracket key to make the brush larger. Or we could use the touch ring on the Wacom tablet. Notice I also zoomed in. Make sure we've got a soft edge brush, which is what we've got there. Opacity is at 100. And now we're just gonna start painting. 
So what we're doing now is we're painting in the new person. So you can see here, there's definitely a little bit of a difference in the shape of the face. And so we're going to go here. Now, it doesn't matter if we pick up some of the hair from the other photo. We're just going to go back and just kind of blend these together in a moment. All right, so if we just hit the X key, so we can go back and now we're just going to go in and just trim some of these areas in here. Just where it kind of went over a little bit. There we go. And we can see, you know, right there, yeah, there's little bits we could touch up like here. But I think you get the general idea. And there we go. So if we want to look at the before, we have this. And then after, we can go just like that. Now, we know that this is off the other face. But if people just saw this photograph and they hadn't seen the other one, they wouldn't know that this wasn't the real girl. And as you can see, uh, the trick to this really is just working with those layer masks and making sure you have lots of area to work with. It's really important that you have a lot of overlap because there might be some unexpected areas where you want to kind of just touch those up. So don't just cut out the face part here. I know it's tempting to do that and that can work to a certain degree, but for better results, grab a little bit more and just mask around the edges and you're going to get a better result. So anyway, I've got a question for you guys. Where are you from? Drop in the comments underneath and tell me where everyone's from because I'm noticing that we're getting so many people from different countries in different parts of the world and that's really exciting. So I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can find these images and download them from Adobe Stock and try them out for yourself. You can get the watermarked versions that you can experiment with as many as you want um, and play around with them and then if you want to use them in your commercial projects you can license them the watermark will be removed and they'll be replaced with high resolution images I'm also going to give you a link where you can grab 10 free images of your own and also if you're a photographer and you'd like to sell your photos on Adobe stock you can get it in front of millions of people and earn a little bit of extra revenue it's very easy to sign up I'm also going to give you that link underneath to sign up to be a contributor so anyway guys I hope you liked this tutorial if you did smash that like button into dust if you aren't already a subscriber to Photoshop Cafe, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and become a subscriber. And also hit that little bell notification and that way you'll be alerted whenever I upload a new tutorial, which is at least once a week, usually on Tuesdays. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.